our second scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Hear now the word of our Lord. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter said, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Friends, there is a basic Christian teaching, something that we say often enough. But even if this is the first time that you've ever heard it, I hope that you will understand that it's true. And what I'm talking about is this. It's the, it's the saying that God is present. It's a saying that God is with us. It's a simple enough thing to say, but... It really has a profound meaning when you stop and step back and think about the implications. To say that God is not just theoretically here, but that God is actually present, is actively involved in our lives. That's an amazing thing. And it's something that can give us a lot of courage and strength to know. It means that God is here when everything is going right. When you're in church every Sunday morning, when you pray before every meal and before you go to sleep, when you take time to read your Bible every single day, it means that God is with you in the mountaintop experiences when a worship song gives you goosebumps or when you feel moved by the Spirit, when you feel that fire lit within your bones as the prophet Jeremiah said. But what about when your strength starts to fade? What about when you have moments of doubt, when it feels like your prayers aren't doing anything other than bouncing back off the ceiling? What about when church feels like the last place you want to go because you know that people are going to ask you how things are going and you don't feel like lying to them today? Where is God then? Or what about when you're just tired? You know that God says that faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains, but what about those times when you feel like you can't even move your own tongue to pray. Where is God when faith starts to fail? We say that he's here, and if that's the case, then the next question has to be, where? And why is it so hard to see him? Well, friends, the best place for us to turn for answers to questions like these is always Scripture. It's amazing the things that you can find when you look. And so that's what we're going to do today. This scripture that we've read tells us a familiar story, at least for many people. 
It's one of those Sunday school classics, you know, the kind that we act out or that we tell children. In this story, Jesus is taking some time after he's taught some people to dismiss the crowd, and so he sends his friends on ahead, tells them to get into a boat and sail across the lake. He leaves them alone, and as they go, what they find is that a storm comes up, that the wind and the waves begin to rise against their ship. The seas are rough, the night is dark and long, and Jesus is not there. And so, as Jesus is off on this mountainside himself praying, the disciples are fighting the winds. They're trying to stay safe. But the truth is, things are terrifying. The sea is a scary place to be when a storm comes up, and so they are lost, waiting, wondering. And in fact, they're so scared that when Jesus actually shows up, their fear boils over and they can't explain what's happening when they see him, and so they think that it's a ghost on the water. They can't even see Jesus clearly because the storm is so bad and their fear is so strong. Friends, we know that it feels good to experience those spiritual highs. We all look back at those mountaintop experiences, whether it's when you had a conversion experience or when you felt a strong conviction in your life, or maybe it was even on that well-known Thursday night at a youth camp. But we all remember what it feels like to truly experience God in a strong way, in a powerful way. It's fulfilling and satisfying and good it feels secure, it's pleasant, it feels safe, and we can know that God is truly there. It's easy to see in those times, but you know as well as I do, friends, that not every season feels like that. In fact, it might be true that most don't feel like that. Sometimes the word that God has for us that we need to hear is, just keep on going and I'll see you soon. And we hate that. That is not the kind of message that we want to hear. We want to know what's going on. We want to be able to see the end clearly and we want to know exactly where God is. But it doesn't always work like that. And there are times when it seems like God has sent us out into a storm, when the test comes back positive, when you can't find work and the bills are coming due, when it seems like life is just one stroke of bad luck after another after another, there are times when you can't catch a break and all we can wonder is, why did God send me into this? What did I do to deserve this? You know that you're supposed to feel this joy, this hope, this comfort, this security. But it's hard to see through the storm. And the storm is raging. The question that comes up is, why is this happening to me? I've been trying to follow Jesus. I've been doing everything that I can. But life isn't supposed to be this hard, is it? Things aren't supposed to get this bad. We want those mountaintop experiences, but the truth is, so often we find ourselves feeling like the disciples on a boat in the middle of a storm with Jesus nowhere in sight. And that's because the hard truth is that faith doesn't always feel good. That faith doesn't always keep us in safe places. 
Quite the opposite. In fact, faith often calls us into frightening situations. Just look back at the early church. Most of the uh, er, most of the apostles did not eat uh, did not meet pleasant ends. Faith often calls us into challenging and frightening situations. Places where you pray for reprieve or deliverance, but if you saw God right in front of you, you might be so disoriented that you wouldn't even recognize him. And as the fear becomes more real than the hope that Jesus promises, it seems like the waves are getting just a little bit higher. And the scripture continues In verse 27, when the people are scared of Jesus, when they see him in the distance and think that he's a ghost, and Jesus responds just like messengers of the Lord always do, just like God himself does and Jesus himself does, do not be afraid. It is I. It's not some ghost. It's not some spirit. It's your friend. And I'm coming to you. And our friend Peter, bless him, gets excited as he always does. You know how Peter is. He oftentimes jumps into action and then thinks about it a few seconds later. Well, in this case, Peter acts in faith and calls out to Jesus and says, Hey, if that's really you, Jesus, if you're not actually a ghost, then tell me to come out on the water. And Jesus says, Come. And so Peter, enthusiastic as always, hops on out of the boat and onto the waves and starts walking towards Jesus. It's an amazing thing. Can you imagine watching your friend jump out of a boat in a storm? And then can you imagine seeing his feet hit the water and him stay afloat? Him walk as though it's just normal, solid ground. But then, Peter makes a mistake. Then Peter looks down. He looks around. He sees the waves that are all around him, and that means that he took his eyes off of Jesus. And in that moment, when he saw the waves again, he remembered, oh, I'm supposed to be afraid. And so he was. And so he began to sink. See, what Peter felt in that moment when he saw Jesus and heard his voice was hope. He had hope that the Lord was coming to him that the Lord was going to deliver on his promises and equip him to do something amazing. And so he said, hey, call me, God. And in the same way that the disciples followed and went out on the boat in the first place, Peter hears the call of the Lord and steps out on faith. And he finds himself in a different kind of danger. Not the one where storms rise unexpectedly, but the kind where you second-guess yourself after you've already begun. This is the kind of fear that comes up when you listen to God and take a chance and then things seem like they're falling apart. It's the kind of fear that comes when you're charitable and generous even though times might be a little bit tight, only to find that a few weeks later, times get a little bit tighter. It's the kind of fear that comes when you hear God calling and you go out on a limb and start a business and then a pandemic spreads. And even though you started with faith, even though you forgot that you were supposed to be afraid and kept your eyes fixed on Jesus at the beginning, when you stop and look around, you start to wonder, was this even a good idea? 
Did Jesus actually know what he was talking about here? And in that moment, the waves get a little bit higher. See, when God calls us to do something, he's calling us not just to act, but to chase after him. He's calling us to pursuit, to walk the path that he has set before us, to go where he is leading. And you can't take your eyes off of him. You can't take your eyes off of the prize that he's set before us. Because when you focus on God and you remember Philippians 4.13, which says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, the only motivation you need is the joy of his promise. And that's motive enough that you can keep on running, you can keep on chasing after God. You can keep on walking over the waves, because they can't stop his power. The waves don't even matter in that moment. But when you take your eyes off of Jesus, when you stop looking at him and start looking at everything else, and the waves begin to look overwhelming. And it's not long after they begin to look overwhelming that they actually start to become overwhelming. And then you're fighting just to keep your head above the water as the waves get higher. And you find yourself wondering, what was I thinking? Why would I ever do something like this? I can't walk on water. I can't run a business. I can't do any of this. I couldn't even navigate this storm from the relative safety of my ship. Why would I jump out of that? But losing faith, friends, does not always look like this. Losing faith doesn't always look like fear or panic. In fact, all too often it looks more like disappointment, or like numbness, like an emptiness, and just feels like nothing at all. And as your disciplines grow slack, as you pray less often because it feels less right, as you find yourself not making time to study and search the scriptures as you find yourself shrinking back more and more from God. The waves just keep getting higher. And your spirit just keeps getting colder. Friends, whether it's fear or numbness, there are times when the waves of life just get to be too much. We look around and forget the courage that faith provided and remember that we're supposed to be afraid. And it seems absolutely certain that there is no way out of it, not this time. We're in too deep. But there's another motto in the Christian faith, and it's this, hear the good news. When it seems like the only options we have are to sink or to swim, when all we can muster is one more cry for help, if that, we can remember that Jesus is still there, walking on the waters that to us seem so unstoppable and may be unstoppable. Friends, no matter how far from grace you feel, no matter how long it's been since you've felt that warmth in your spirit, no matter what you've done or how far you've already sunk beneath the waters, if you'll just look up from the waves of life, for just a moment, what you'll find is a hand stretched out, ready to catch you. It's okay to experience these moments of weakness and fear and insecurity. Just remember that Jesus is still there. And you can find hope 
in even the worst of times. You can find that he's still ready to save you. And remember that the things that seem so unbearable to you aren't even an obstacle to him, even more than they were the waves that pulled Peter under. You've probably heard it said that God won't give you more than you can handle. Friends, let me tell you that that's a lie. And if you go into life expecting that God won't give you more than you can handle, then when you find yourself overwhelmed, you'll find yourself thinking of God as an enemy. Or worse, you'll find yourself thinking that God isn't there at all. But that's because it's a lie that God won't give you more than you can handle. God will give you plenty more than you can handle. The world will give you more than you can handle. But friends, the good news is that there is nothing that is more than God can handle. And so, as the waves of life grow higher and higher and pull us down further and further, we can remember that there is no depth too great for him to save us from. You can remember that your spirit will never be so cold that he can't rekindle it. So look up from wherever you are, right now and see Jesus. See the hand that he's extended to you, the hand that offers salvation. And don't be afraid to let him lift you up out of the water. Let's pray. Merciful God, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, the power that he's shown over every part of this world, the love that he's shown by his extended hand. Lord, I pray that you would give us the strength and the humility to respond in faith. You would give us the courage to step out in the waters and the faithfulness to keep our eyes fixed on you. Lord, guide us through this week as we go. Help us to navigate the waves of life, however tall they might seem. And Lord, above all else, help us to remember that you have already overcome everything that this world has to place against us. Remind us that we can share in your victory. If only we'll call out to you. I pray these things in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, friends, as we enter into a time of closing with song, I want to give you an invitation. As God has called each of us into different things, as God leads us through life, Oftentimes, we find ourselves needing to respond to his call. And so, I want to invite you this morning, wherever you are, whether we know each other or aren't uh, quite familiar with each other yet, if you feel called by God to something, anything in your life, if there's a response that you want to offer up, please get in touch. Leave a comment. Send a message. Again, if you have my number, you can send me a text right now. Because what I want more than anything, what our church wants more than anything, is to be able to walk alongside you in your journey of faith. To help you go where God is calling you to go. So please, get in touch. Let us know how we can be praying for you, how we can support you, and how we can help you in whatever you're experiencing. 